You can go ahead and continue to, to, uh, to eat if you'll do it quietly. And um, my name is Jim Wilburn. I'm the dean of the School of Public Policy at Pepperdine. We have a number of people here from uh, who are related to Pepperdine in various ways. As you know, a lot of students who are here that are that are uh, graduate students of the School of Public Policy. Our students, by the way, for those of you who may be new to Pepperdine's <coughs> venue, are from all over the world. We have students here probably from half a dozen different countries, and, uh, including Texas. And <laughs> people from all over, uh, I can say that to someone who was born there. And people from all over the world, from, uh, from probably 15 different countries. So we're delighted to have them. We also have a number of our faculty here. And I'm not going to introduce any of our faculty or the students because we're here to hear some speakers whose time is valuable and, and we deeply appreciate their coming. Um, let me just say that there are a lot of reasons in the world that uh, for being discouraged. And uh, if you see something that you think needs to be changed or that you wonder if maybe it's gone too far and it's irreversible, if you just can come and spend a day with me in Pepperdine and circulate among these young people here. It will restore any doubts you may have about the future, not only of this country, but of the world in general. And it's just a great joy for me to be able to work with them. Uh, at this time, I'm going to not uh, talk any further, but uh, spend as much time as we can with uh, the panel. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you someone who with his family is hosting this today, one of our students, John Thomas. John? Dean Wilburn, thank you so much for allowing us to have this day to discuss this important topic. Welcome everybody to Pepperdine's inaugural policy day. In addition to educating students, and fostering leadership, the School of Public Policy serves as a place for leaders to come together to think, share, and create ideas. A single proposed initiative can drastically change the direction and future of our state in one election cycle. An initiative can do many things. It can raise your property tax, create massive public works projects, or circumvent a boneheaded legislature. As with many public policy decisions, hey Dan, thanks for joining us. <laughs> As with many public policy decisions, the debate here today is not about whether or not we should have an initiative system in California, but rather to take a look at how the system affects us as stakeholders, voters, and citizens, and to see if the system needs to be adjusted. Thank you to our incredibly distinguished panel of experts for taking time out of their busy schedules to share their knowledge and expertise with us this afternoon. When I approached each of the panelists to participate, there was not even a moment's hesitation to be here with you today. It is truly a testament to their undying passion for California. Thank you to all the students and all the guests for joining us as well. We are incredibly fortunate to have as our moderator and guest this afternoon, Kevin James. Kevin is the host of a very popular talk radio show on Carol 870, The Kevin James Show, which airs Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Kevin hails from Oklahoma originally, attended Oklahoma University, and then worked as an assistant U.S. attorney, where he then left to practice entertainment law for nearly a decade. He is the former host of Red Eye Radio on KABC and can frequently be found on Core TV and other news programs. On his show, Kevin calls out corruption in politics and routinely draws attention to and provides solutions for policy issues of both local and national prominence. I cannot thank him enough for agreeing to moderate today's panel. So please, let's give our moderator and favorite talk radio show host a warm welcome. talk about the genius of the study that we came up with in naming our radio show. <laughs> Notice how all radio shows are <laughs> just named 
proposed. So I take no credit for that uh, incredible research and money that we spent on that. Uh, I do want to, uh, to start by uh, just providing a very brief history. You know, the uh, proposition process in California uh, came about around 1911 when an amendment to the California Constitution established the California initiative process and gave uh, voters uh, the right to enact legislation. And the debate started then and it continues now. I think it's probably more interesting now than it has ever been. Currently, there are more than 20 states across the country that have some form of initiative and referendum procedure. And is the process something we should keep or not? Should changes be made? We have an incredible panel today to, uh, to address some of those questions and answer some of those questions. Alphabetically, from my left, we have Steve Cooley, who is truly a career prosecutor who joined the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office in 1973 as a law clerk. You could certainly say he rose through the ranks. <laughs> Nearly three decades later, he was elected district attorney in 2000 by a landslide. He was overwhelmingly re-elected four years later. In 2008, he became the LA County District Attorney, the first LA County District Attorney in 70 years to be re-elected to a third consecutive term. He created the Public Integrity Division, something that is near and dear to my heart, as prosecuted politicians whose misconduct had gone unpunished for years. He also formed the Justice System Integrity Division, which holds judges, attorneys, police officers, and others working in the justice system accountable if they break the law. Under Mr. Cooley's leadership, the use of DNA and other new techniques in solving so-called cold cases has been given priority. And the District Attorney's Office, of course, co-authored Prop 69, California's All Felon DNA Database Law. In his capacity as District Attorney, Steve Cooley directs more than 1,000 attorneys, nearly 300 investigators, and more than 800 clerical and support personnel who prosecute 60,000 felonies and 130,000 misdemeanors a year. He oversees an annual operating budget of more than $330 million. A graduate of Cal State LA and his JD from the University of Southern California as a candidate, a current candidate for the State Office of Attorney General. The Attorney General, of course, is used to prepare the title and summary for proposed initiative measures prior to the circulation of qualification petitions, something that you'll hear him talk about, just the importance of that process, Steve Cooley. We also have Joel Fox, who operates Joel Fox Consulting, a public affairs and political concert consulting firm. He also currently serves as the president of the Small Business Action Committee. Prior to starting his own firm in January of 99, Joel worked at the very famous Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association for 19 years, serving as the association's president from 1986 all the way to, 19, uh, to 1998. He is co-publisher and editor-in-chief of the website Fox and Hounds Daily, which I read daily and often reference on my show, Thanks for the Content Joel, uh, which offers commentary and news on California business and politics. Over the years, Joel has taken on a key role in many statewide local ballot proposition campaigns, authored hundreds of opinion pieces which have been published in national and state newspapers and websites. His book, The Legend of Prop 13, was published in 2003. He has served on numerous statewide commissions appointed by Republican governors and Democrat assembly speakers, including one sitting right next to him. Two of those commissions, one created by Governor Wilson, the other by Bob Hertzberg, reviewed the initiative process. Like I said, we've got great experts on the panel today. And Joel was a senior policy consultant for Schwarzenegger for a governor campaign during the historic recall election of 2003. 